Hello everyone, welcome to Medis Global. For the mathematics, we have prepared total six parts. Here this is the first part in which we'll cover all the important formulas and the short notes for the linear algebra. So let's start one by one. Here the first topic is matrix. So in the matrix, first one is the definition. It is a system of m n numbers arranged along m rows and n columns. Conventionally, you can say that single capital letter is used to denote a matrix. And here, as you can see that this is the standard representation of matrix. Then after types of matrices, first one is row and column matrices. So in the row matrix, as you can see here, it is only a single row or single vector. You can say that single row vector. Then in the column matrix, here it is the vertical single column is there or you can say that column vector. Here we have provided the short notes from very basic points so you need to keep some patience if you are already aware of this type of matrix. Here the next type is square matrix. So for the square matrix these are the properties. First one is the same number of rows and columns then order of square matrix is equals to number of rows or columns then after a principal diagonal here it is the diagonal of a square matrix which is known as the principal diagonal then the trace of the matrix is the sum of the diagonal elements of a square matrix so here it is the representation of the trace and these properties are important for the examination trace of lambda is equals to lambda into trace of a here lambda is scalar then after trace of a plus b is equals to trace of a plus trace of b then trace of AB is equal to trace of B into A. So these are the properties for the square matrix. Then after for the rectangular matrix, number of rows is not equal to number of columns. Then the next one is diagonal matrix. So for the diagonal matrix, it is a square matrix in which all the elements except those in leading diagonal are zero. Here the example is also given. Now let's move towards the next one. Here the next matrix is unit matrix or you can say that identity matrix it is a diagonal matrix in which all the leading diagonal elements are 1 here for example here 3 cross 3 identity matrix is given then after the next one is null matrix or you can say that 0 matrix in this matrix all the elements are 0 then after next one is symmetrix and skew symmetric matrices here for the symmetric matrices aij is equals to plus aji for all i and j in other words a transpose is equals to a and for the skew symmetric matrix when aij is equals to minus aji then a transpose is equals to minus a so these two are the examples of the symmetric and skew symmetric matrices and remember this condition for symmetric matrix a transpose is equals to a and for skew symmetric matrix a transpose is equals to minus a then after the next one is triangular matrix a matrix is said to be upper triangular if all the elements below its principal diagonal are zero and a matrix is said to be lower triangular if all the elements above its principal diagonals are zeros. Here two examples are also given for the upper triangular matrix and the lower triangular matrix. Then after the next one is orthogonal matrix. Here if A into A transpose is equal to identity matrix then the matrix A is said to be the orthogonal matrix. Similarly for the singular matrix if mod A is equal to zero then A is called a singular matrix. Then after next one is unitary matrix. If we defined A theta is equals to A bar transpose which is equals to transpose of a conjugate of matrix A. Then the matrix is unitary if A theta into A is equals to I where I is equals to identity matrix. Once again from these types of matrix 
there are so many times questions were asked so all these matrices are important for the examination here the next one is permission matrix it is a square matrix with complex entries which is equals to its own conjugate transpose here a theta is equals to a or you can say that a i j is equals to a i j bar here note that in Hermitian matrix, diagonal elements are always real. This question was asked more than two times in the examination. Then after next one is skew Hermitian matrix. It is a square matrix with complex entries which is equals to the negative of conjugate transpose. Here a theta is equals to minus a or you can say that a i j is equals to minus a j i bar. Here note that in the skew Hermitian matrix, diagonal elements are either zero or pure imaginary. This question was also asked in the examination. So for the Hermitian and skew Hermitian, these two conditions you have to remember, as well as these two nodes are also important for the examination. Then after the next one is idempotent matrix. If a square is equals to a, then the matrix a is called the idempotent matrix. So these are the important types of the matrix. Now the next topic is multiplication of a matrix by a scalar. Every element of the matrix get multiplied by that scalar. Here multiplication of matrices in that two matrices can be multiplied only when the number of columns of the first matrix is equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. Multiplication of M cross N and N cross P matrices results into the M cross P. Here this rule is most important for the examination because based on this rule, the directly questions can be asked in the examination and till now more than 6 to 7 questions were asked from this topic. Then after determinant, here an nth order determinant is an expression associated with n cross n square matrix. If a is equals to a i j, then for n is equals to 2, determinant of a is equals to a 1 1, a 1 2, a 2 1 and a 2 2. So for this matrix, you can find the determinant by a 1 1 into a 2 2 minus a 1 2 into a 2 1. Similarly for 3 cos 3, you can solve the determinant. This Determinant solving are very easier in the examination because from 11th and 12th standard we are solving the determinant for the matrix. Then the next one is minors and cofactors. Here the minor of an element in a determinant is the determinant obtained by the deleting the row and the column which intersect that element. Then cofactor is the minor with proper sign and the sign is given by minus 1 raised to i plus j where the element belongs to i row and j th column then here this is the most important topic which are the properties of determinants there are 13 properties are here first one is a determinant remains unaltered by changing its rows into columns and columns into rows then second one is if two parallel lies of a determinant are interchanged then the determinant retains its numerical values but changes its sign in general manner row or column is referred as a line then third one is determinant vanish if two parallel lines are identical then if each element of a line multiplied by the same factor then the whole determinant is multiplied by the factor here note that it is the difference with matrix then if each element of line consists of the m terms then determinant can be expressed as the sum of the m determinants then if each element of line be added equimultiple of the corresponding elements of one or more parallel lines then determinant is unaffected for example by operation r2 to R2 plus VR1 plus QR3 then determinant is unaffected. Then next one is determinant of an upper triangular or lower triangular or diagonal scalar matrix is equal to product of leading diagonal elements of the matrix. 
then if a and b are the square matrix of the same order then determinant of a into b is equals to determinant of b into a is equals to rate of a into rate of b the ninth one is if a is non-singular matrix then a inverse is equals to 1 upon and representation then after the determinant of a skew symmetric matrix for example a transpose is equals to minus a for the odd order here the determinant is zero then if a is a unitary matrix or orthogonal matrix then determinant of a is equals to plus or minus one then if a is square matrix of order n then rate of k into a is equals to k raised to n into determinant of a then the last one is determinant of i of n is equals to 1 where i of n is equals to identity matrix of order n here all the properties are important but uh, mostly in the examination from 8 to 12 properties there are so many times questions were asked then the next one is inverse of a matrix a inverse is equals to adjoint a divided by determinant of a here determinant of a must be a non-zero then inverse of a matrix if x is then it is always unique then if it is a two cross true matrix then its inverse will be one upon a d minus b c into d minus c minus b and a so these are the representation for the inverse of matrix then after important points here first one is i into a is equals to a into i is equals to a then second one is 0 into a is equals to a into 0 is equals to 0 here 0 is null matrix then if a b is equals to 0 then it is not necessary that a or b is null matrix also it doesn't mean that b into a is equals to 0 then if the product of two non-zero square matrices a and b is zero matrix then a and b are singular matrices then if a is non-singular matrix and a into b is equals to 0 then b is null matrix then a b is not equals to b then in general cumulative property does not hold the next one is a into b c is equals to a b into c then associative property holds and the last one is a into b plus c is equals to a b plus a c then distributive property holds then some more nodes are here if a c is equals to a d it doesn't implies that c is equals to d even when a is not equals to zero then if a c t b n cross n matrix and if rank of a is equals to n and s is equals to a d then c is equals to d the next one is a plus b transpose is equals to a transpose plus b transpose then a b transpose is equals to b transpose into a transpose then a b inverse is equals to b inverse into a inverse then a into a inverse is equals to a inverse into a is equals to i where i is equals to identity matrix then next one is transpose of k into a is equals to k into a transpose then inverse of k into a is equals to k inverse into a inverse where k is scalar and a is vector then transpose of a inverse is equals to inverse of a transpose then a transpose bar is equals to a bar transpose here conjugate of a transpose matrix is equals to transpose of a conjugate matrix then if a non-singular matrix a is symmetric then a inverse is also symmetric then if a is orthogonal matrix then a transpose and a inverse are also orthogonal then last one is if a is a square matrix of order n then first one is determinant of adjoint a is equals to determinant of a raised to n minus 1 then second one is determinant of adjoint of adjoint a is equals to determinant of a raised to n minus 1 square then third one is adjoint of adjoint a is equals to determinant of a raised to n minus 2 into a 
Then next one is elementary transformation of a matrix. Here first step is interchange of any two lines then multiplication of a line by a constant then addition of a constant multiplication of any line to the another line. Here note that elementary transformations don't change the rank of the matrix. However, it changes the eigenvalues of the matrix. Now here it starts the most awaited topic of the lecture which is rank of the matrix. This is the most important topic as well. If we select any R rows and R columns from any matrix A, then deleting all the other rows and columns, then the determinant formed by this R cross R element is called minor of A of order R. Here the definition is a matrix is said to be of rank R when it has at least one non-zero minor of order R and the second one is every minor of order higher than R vanishes. Here other definition is the rank is also defined as the maximum number of linearly independent row vectors. Then here one special case rank of square matrix rank is equals to number of non-zero row in upper triangular matrix using elementary transformation. Here some notes are there. First one is rank of A into B is less than or equal to minimum of rank of A or rank of B. Then after the rank of a diagonal matrix is simply the number of non-zero elements in principal diagonal then a system of homogeneous equations such that the number of unknown variable exists the number of equations necessarily has non-zero solutions. So in general for finding the rank of a matrix here it is the number of non-zero rows in its row equivalent form or in the other words you can say that it is the maximum number of linearly independent row vectors. Then the next one is if A is non-singular matrix then all the row or column vectors are independent then after if A is singular matrix then vectors of A are linearly dependent. Then after rank of A is equal to 0 if, if and only if A is a null matrix. Then after if two matrices A and B have the same size and the same rank then A, B are the equivalent matrices. And the tenth one is every non-singular matrix is a row matrix and it is equivalent to identity matrix. Now the second last topic of this lecture is solution of linear system of equations. As you all know from this topic every year there may be one or two questions definitely will be asked in the examination. So this first one is here it is the representation of the a into x is equals to b here a is equals to coefficient matrix then r is equals to rank of a and r s is equals to rank of c then c is equals to a and b here c is equals to augmented matrix and n is equals to number of unknown variables here consistency of a system of equations here first one is for non-homogeneous equations so ax is equals to b there are three cases for the non-homogeneous equations first one is if r is not equals to r days then the equations are inconsistent or you can say that there is no solution then second one is if r is equals to r days is equals to n then the equations are consistent and there is a unique solution then third one is if r is equals to r days and less than n then the equations are consistent and there are infinite number of solutions. Here R des is equals to the rank of augmented matrix. Then after next one is for the homogeneous equations or you can say that AX is equals to 0. Here there are two cases. First one is if R is equals to N then the equations have only a trivial zero solution. Then second one is if R less than N then N minus are linearly independent solution. So here infinite non-trivial solutions. 
here note that in the case of homogeneous equation there is no case of no solution there is always one solution exists these five conditions every aspirant should remember by heart because this is very important for the examination then here note that consistent means one or more solution or you can say that unique or infinite solution and inconsistent means no solution the next one is Kramer's rule let the following two equations be there a11 x1 plus a12 x2 is equals to b1 and the second one is a21 x1 plus a22 x2 is equals to b2 then determinant is equals to a11 a12 b21 b22 to b then after d1 is equals to b1 a12 b2 a22 and d2 is equals to a11 b1 a21 b2 then solution using Kramer's rule x1 is equals to d1 by d and x2 is equals to d2 by d in the above method it is assumed that first one is number of equations is equals to number of unknowns and second one is mod d or you can say that determinant is not equals to zero so using Kramer's rule also you can find that there is a single solution or infinite solution so here these are the conditions in general for non-homogeneous equations mod d is not equals to zero then single solution or non-trivial solution then if d is equals to zero then infinite solution then for the homogeneous equations if d is not equal to zero then trivial solutions and d is equal to zero then non-trivial solution or infinite solution so these two are the method first one is by finding the rank you can find the solutions and in the second method you can use Kramer's rule also and the next one is eigenvalues and eigenvectors this is the last topic for this lecture here this is also very important for the examination from this topic also there are so many times questions were asked so first one is characteristic equation for the eigenvalues here determinant of a minus lambda i is equals to zero and the roots of this equation are called the characteristic roots or latent roots or eigenvalues of the matrix a then after the eigenvectors here a minus lambda i into x is equals to zero for each eigenvalue lambda solving for x gives the corresponding eigenvector then here note that for a given eigenvalue there can be different eigenvectors but for the same eigenvector there can't be different eigenvalues this note is very useful in the examination then after there are some for the eigenvalues here first one is the sum of the eigenvalues of a matrix is equals to the sum of the principal diagonal then second one is the product of the eigenvalues of a matrix is equals to determinant then the largest eigenvalue of a matrix is always greater than or equal to any of the diagonal elements of the matrix then fourth one is if lambda is an eigenvalue of the orthogonal matrix then one by lambda is also its eigenvalue then if a is real then its eigenvalue is real or complex conjugate pair then next one is matrix a and its transpose at has the same characteristic root or you can say that eigenvalues then next one is the eigenvalues of a triangular matrix are just the diagonal elements of the matrix then zero is the eigenvalue of the matrix if and only if the matrix is singular then eigenvalues of a unitary matrix or orthogonal matrix has absolute value 1 then after next one is eigenvalues of Hermitian or symmetric matrix are purely real then next one is eigenvalue of skew Hermitian matrix or skew symmetric matrix is 0 or pure imaginary and the next one is determinant of A by lambda is an eigenvalue of adjoint A because adjoint A is equals to date of a into a inverse then this is most important for the examination here if lambda is an eigenvalue of the matrix then here five properties are there first one is eigenvalue of a inverse is equals to 1 by lambda then eigenvalue of a raised to m is equals to lambda raised to m then eigenvalue of k a are k lambda where k is scalar then eigenvalue of a plus k i are lambda plus k then eigenvalue of 
a minus k i square or lambda minus k square. So these five properties you have to remember for the examination. And these are some important properties for the eigenvectors. Here first one is eigenvector of x of matrix A is not unique. Here let xi is eigenvector then cxi is also eigenvector where c is equals to scalar constant then if lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 up to lambda n are distinct then x1 x2 up to xn are linearly independent then third one is if two or more eigenvalues are equal it may or may not be possible to get linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to the equal roots then fourth one is two eigenvectors are called orthogonal vectors if x1 transpose into x2 is equals to zero then here note that for a single vector to be orthogonal a transpose is equals to a inverse or a into a transpose is equals to a into a inverse is equals to one then eigenvectors of a symmetric matrix corresponding to the different eigenvalues are orthogonal then here Kelly Hamilton theorem states that every square matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation so you can replace a by lambda then here the next topic is vector it is any quantity having n components is called a vector of order n then linear dependence of vectors if one vector can be written as linear combination of others, then the vector is linearly dependent, then linearly independent vectors. If no vectors can be written as a linear combination of others, then they are linearly independent. Then suppose the vectors are x1, x2, x3, x4, then its linear combination is lambda 1 x1 plus lambda 2 x2 plus lambda 3 x3 plus lambda 4 x4 is equals to 0. Then if lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 lambda 4 are not all 0 then they are linearly dependent. And if all lambda are 0 then they are linearly independent. So this is all about the first part of the linear algebra in which we have covered the types of matrices then after determinant and properties of determinant then after the system of linear equations then after rank of matrix then after eigenvalues and eigenvectors so if you like this video please do like and subscribe for the upcoming videos in which we'll discuss about probability distribution so keep sending this video to all your study groups thank you so much for watching the video good luck Hello everyone, welcome to MyDC Global. This is the second part of the mathematics in which we'll include the quick reason for the probability and distribution. Here first one is event. Here it is the outcome of an experiment is called event. Then mutually exclusive events. Here it is also known as disjoint events. Here two events are called mutually exclusive if the occurrence of one excludes the occurrence of the others for examples both can't occur simultaneously here here a and b is equals to 5 then p of a and b is equals to 0 then after equally likely events if one of the events cannot happen in preference to other then such events are said to be equally likely events then odds in favor of an event is equals to m by n where m is equals to number of ways favorable to a and n is equals to number of ways not favorable to a then after odds against the event is equals to n by m then after probability p of a is equals to m by n which is equals to number of favorable ways divided by 
total number of ways. So you can say that P of A plus P of A dash is equal to 1. Then after important points are here. P of A or B is equal to probability of happening of at least one event of A and B. Then after P of A and B is equal to probability of happening of both events A and B. Then after if the events are certain to happen then probability is unity. Then if the events are impossible to happen then the probability is zero. Then addition law of probability here first one is for every events A and B and C not mutually exclusive then P of A or B or C is equal to P of A plus P of B plus P of C minus P of A and B minus P of B and C minus P of C and A plus P of A and B and C then for the event a, B and C which are mutually exclusive then P of A or B or C is equal to P of A plus P of B plus P of C. Then next one is independent events. Here two events are said to be independent if the occurrence of one does not affect the occurrence of the other. If P of A and B is equal to P of A, P of B then these two events are known as independent events. The next one is conditional probability. If A and B are the dependent events, then P of B by A denotes the probability of the occurrence of B when A has already occurred. This is known as the conditional probability. So you can say that P of B by A is equal to P of A and B divided by P of A. This equation is very useful in the examination. Then here next one is for independent events A and B, P of B by A is equal to P of B because as you all know for independent events P of A into B is equal to P of A into P of B. Then after theorem of combined probability, if the probability of an event A happening as a result of a trial is P of A, then probability of an event B happening as a result of trial after A has happened is p of b by a then the probability of both the events a and b happening is p of a into b is equals to p of a into p of b by a where p of a is not equals to zero similarly p of a into b is equals to p of b into p of a by b where p of b is not equals to zero so basically these two results you have to remember for the examination this is also known as the multiplication theorem then for the independence events a and b p of b by a is equals to p of b and p of a by b is equals to p of a hence p of a into b is equals to p of a into p of b this is the proof for the above results for the independent events then after important points are there if p1 and p2 are the probability of two independent events then first one is p1 into 1 minus p2 is equals to probability of first event happens and the second fails for example only first happens then 1 minus p1 into 1 minus p2 is equals to probability of both events fails then third one is 1 minus in bracket 1 minus p1 into 1 minus p2 then it is probability of at least one event occur and the last one is p1 into p2 it represents the probability of both event then here it is one of the most important topic from the probability portion which is known as Bayes theorem as you all know from this theorem there may be one or two questions every year so let's start the theorem an event a corresponds to a number of exhaustive events b1 b2 up to bn then if p of bi and p of a by bi are given then p of bi upon a is equals to p of bi into p of a by bi divided by sigma p of bi into p of a by bi so this is the equation for the base theorem here this is also known as the theorem of inverse probability 
So by looking towards the equation it looks like something critical but uh, once you are calculating some example based on this theorem then it will be very easier for you to calculate the examples in the examination. Now the next one is the random variable. Real variable associated with the outcome of a random experiment is called a random variable. Now the next topic is distribution. Here there are four to five distribution functions are there first one is probability density function pdf or also you can say that probability mass function here the set of values x with their probabilities pi constitute a probability distribution or probability density function of the variable x if f of x is the pdf then f of x of k is equal to p of x is equal to xk then PDF has the following properties. First one is probability density function is always positive. F of x greater than or equal to zero. Then integration minus infinite to infinite f of x dx is equal to one for the continuous. And sigma i is equal to one two and f of x i is equal to one for the discrete function. Then the next function is discrete cumulative distribution function or distribution function so here it is also known as CDF here if f of x of x is equal to p of x less than or equal to x which is equal to integration minus infinite to x f of x dx then f of x is defined as the cumulative distribution function or simply the distribution function of the continuous variable then CDF has the following properties. First one is integration d of f of x into x divided by dx is equal to f of x dash into x which is equal to f of x greater than or equal to 0. Then second one is 1 greater than or equal to f of x of x is greater than or equal to 0. Then, then the third one is if x2 greater than x1 then fx x2 greater than fx x1. This is the condition for the CDF is monotone or you can say that non-decreasing function. Then the next one is f of x of minus infinite is equal to 0 and fx of infinite is equal to 1. Then p of a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b is equal to integration a to b f of x dx is equal to integration minus infinite to b fx dx minus integration minus infinite to a f of x dx is equals to fx b minus fx a so these are the some important notes you have to remember then the next topic is expectation e of x here e of x is equals to sigma i is equals to 1 to n xi into f of xi this is for discrete case then second one is e of x is equals to integration minus infinite to infinite xi into f of xi dx this is for the continuous case then there are some properties of the expectation e of constant is equals to constant then e of c into x is equals to c into e of x where c is equals to constant then e of ax plus by is equals to a into e of x plus b into e of y where a and b are constants then fourth one is e of xy is equals to e of x into e of y by x is equals to e of y into e of x by y. Here e of xy is not equals to e of x into e of y in general. But e of xy is equals to e of x into e of y if x and y are independent. So these four properties are most important for the examination because every year there may be one question from these properties of expectation and the variance here the next point is variance it is denoted by where of x so in general the equation of where of x is most useful in the examination it is denoted by where of x is equals to e of x x square minus e of x whole square then here there are some important properties for the variance first one is Variance of constant is equal to 0. Then second one is variance of c of x is equal to c square into where of x minus variance is non-linear. Here c is equal to constant. Then third one is 
variance of cx plus or minus t is equal to c square into variance of x minus variance is translational invariant here c and d are constants then fourth one is where of x minus k is equal to where of x where k is equal to constant and number five where of x plus by is equal to a square into where of x plus b square into where of y plus or minus 2a into covariance of xy if not dependent here a and b are constants then where of x plus by is also equals to a square into where of x plus b square into where of y here these are independent means you can say that a and b both are independent and the next term is covariance here covariance of x y is equals to e of x y minus e of x into e of y here if independent then covariance is equal to zero and e of x y is equals to e of x into e of y so you can say that x and y both are independent then if covariance is equal to zero then the events are not necessarily independent so this term you have to remember then after properties of covariance first one is covariance of x y is equal to covariance of y x if both are symmetric then second one is covariance of x x is equal to variance of x third one is mod of covariance of x y is less than or equal to sigma x into sigma y then here next topic is standard distribution function it is discrete random variable case here then first one is binomial distribution p of r is equals to ncr into p raise to r into q raise to n minus r then for binomial distribution mean is equals to n into p then variance is equals to n p q and standard deviation is equals to under root n into p into q these three are the most favorite kmcqs for the examination from the binomial distribution so every aspirant should remember these three equations for binomial distribution then second one is poisson's distribution here for this case also you have to remember this equation probability of k success is p of k is equals to e raised to minus lambda into lambda raised to k divided by k factorial here k is equals to number of success trials n is equals to number of trials p is equals to success case probability lambda is equals to mean of distribution then for poisson distribution mean is equals to lambda variance is equals to lambda and lambda is equals to n into p so you can say that mean is equals to variance is equals to n into p so these are the important terms for the binomial and the poisson distribution now let's move towards the next one then here the next topic is standard distribution function for continuous random variable case first one is normal distribution or you can say that gaussian distribution here f of x is equals to 1 upon under root 2 pi sigma square into e raised to minus x minus mu square by 2 sigma square where mu and sigma are the mean and standard deviation respectively then p of mu minus sigma less than x less than mu plus sigma is equals to 68 percent then after p of mu minus 2 sigma less than x less than mu plus 2 sigma is equals to 95.5 percent and p of mu minus 3 sigma less than x less than mu plus 3 sigma is equals to 99.7 percent then for the normal distribution total area under the curve is unity so you can say that integration minus infinite to infinite f of x dx is equals to 1 then second one is the exponential distribution here for this function f of x is equals to lambda into e raised to minus lambda x where x is greater than or equal to 0 here lambda is also greater than 0 then if f of x is equals to 0 then x less than 0 then second one is uniform distribution function f of x is equals to 1 upon b minus a for b greater than or equal to f of x greater than or equal to a and f of x is equal to 0 for all other cases then the first condition then fourth one is Cauchy distribution function here 
the equation is f of x is equals to 1 upon pi into 1 plus x square and the last number 5 railing distribution function f of x is equals to x by mu square into e raised to minus x square by 2 mu square here these five equations are important then here the second last topic of this video is mean median and mode so here mean it is the arithmetic mean x bar is equals to sigma xi upon n then after median when the values in a data sample are arranged in descending order or ascending order of the magnitude the median is the middle term if the number of the sample is odd and is the mean of two middle terms if the number is even then the third one is mode it is defined as the value in the sample data that occurs most frequently. So for the mean, median and mode you have to practice some different type of questions. Then here some important points are there. Mean is best measurement due to all observations taken into consideration. Then second one is mode is worst measurement due to only maximum frequency is taken. Then third one is in median 50% of observation is taken. Then sum of the deviation about mean is zero. Then sum of the absolute deviation about median is minimum. Then sum of the square of the deviation about mean is minimum. Then coefficient of variance is equal to sigma by x bar into 100. And correlation coefficient is equal to rho of xy is equal to covariance of xy divided by sigma x into sigma y. Then here minus 1 less than or equal to rho of xy less than or equal to 1. Then rho of xy is equal to rho of yx. Then mod of rho of xy is equal to 1 when p of x is equal to 0 is equal to 1. Or p of x is equal to ay is equal to 1 for same value of a. Then after if the correlation coefficient is negative then two events are negatively correlated. Then if the correlation coefficient is 0 then two events are uncorrelated and third one is if the correlation coefficient is positive then the two events are positively correlated then here this is the last topic of this video line of regression the equation of the line of regression of y on x is y minus y bar is equal to rho into sigma x by sigma y bar into x minus x bar then after the equation of line of regression of x on y is you have to just put the value of x in place of the y. So you can say that you have to substitute the x in place of y. Then after rho into sigma y by sigma x bar is called the regression coefficient of y on x and is denoted by b y x. Then rho into sigma x by sigma y bar is called the regression coefficient of x on y and is denoted by b x y then joint probability distribution if x and y are two random variables then the joint distribution is defined as f x y of x y is equal to p of x less than or equal to x and y less than or equal to small y then here these are some properties which are important for the joint distribution function or you can say that cumulative distribution function. First one is fxy of minus infinite to minus infinite is equals to zero. Then second one is fxy of infinite to infinite is equals to one. Then third one is fxy of minus infinite to infinite is equals to zero. Then fourth one is fxy of x to infinite is equals to p of x less than or equal to small x and y less than or equal to infinite which is equals to fx of x into 1 which is equals to fx of x then last one is fxy of infinite to y is equals to fy of y then joint probability density function here it is defined as fxy is equals to del square f of xy by del x into del y this property is very useful double integration minus infinite to infinite f of x y dx dy is equals to 1 then here note that x and y are said to be independent random variable if f x y of x y is equals to f x of x 
into fy of y so this is all about the second part of the probability and distribution so if you like this video please do like and subscribe to our channel for the upcoming videos in next video we will discuss about the important formulas of the numerical ability which will be the part 3 for the mathematics in which we have prepared total 6 parts so yes you can press the bell icon for the upcoming parts of numerical ability thank you so much hope for the best good luck Welcome to Medici Global. This is the third part of the mathematics in which we will include the important formulas for the numerical methods. Let's begin one by one. Here first one is the solution of algebraic and transcendental function or you can say that finding the roots. In, in that first one is bisection method. This method finds the root between points A and B. Here if f of x is continuous between A and B and f of a and f of b are opposite sign then there is a root between a and b then second one is first approximation to the root is x1 is equal to a plus b by 2 then if f of x1 is equal to 0 then x1 is the root of f of x is equal to 0 otherwise the root lies between a and x1 or x1 and b then similarly x2 and x3 you can determine so here simplest iterative method then bisection method always converts but often slowly then this method can't be used for finding the complex roots and the rate of the convergence is linear so these are some key points for the bisection method now let's move towards the next method which is neutron reduction method or you can say that successive substitution method or tangent method here the equation for the neutron reduction method is xn plus 1 is equals to xn minus f of xn divided by f dash xn. So this is the most favorite method for the examiner in every exam which are conducted recently for the engineering field. Then after this method is commonly used for its simplicity and greater speed. Then here f of x is assumed to have continuous derivative f dash x. Then this method fails if f dash x is equal to 0. Then it has second order of convergence or quadratic convergence. For example, the subsequent error at each step in the proportional to the square of the error at previous step. Then sensitive to starting value. Here the Newton Raphson method converges provided the initial approximation is chosen sufficiently close to the root. Then last one is the rate of convergence is quadratic. So these are the key points for the Newton Raphson method. Then after the third method, which is second method, this is the modified version of the Newton Raphson method. Here xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus xn minus xn minus 1 divided by f of xn minus f of xn minus 1 into f of xn. So if you write down in the form of 1 and 0 by putting the value of n is equal to 0 then this equation will be very easier for you to understand and for remember. Then after here some key points convergence is not guaranteed for this second method. Then after if convergence then convergence super linear it means more rapid than linear and almost quadratic like Newton Raphson method around 1.62. Here 1.62 is the rate of convergence. Then here the last method is regular falsy method. So you can also say that the method of false position. Here for this method first of all there are some key points. Regular falsy method always converges. Then however it converges 
slowly then after if converges order of the convergence is between 1 and 2 then it's near equal to 1 then after next point is it is superior to the bisection method here if given that f of x is equal to 0 then select x0 and x1 such that f of x0 and f of x1 less than 0 and having opposite sign then after x2 is equals to x0 minus x1 minus x0 divided by f of x1 minus f of x0 and f of x0 is equals to x0 into f of x1 minus x1 into f of x0 divided by f of x1 minus f of x0 then after here check that if f of x0 and f of x2 less than 0 or f of x1 into f of x2 is less than 0 then compute the next term which is x3 here which is an approximation to the root then after next topic is solution of system of linear equations here the first method is Gauss elimination method here equations are converted into the upper triangular matrix from the solved by back substitution method here consider that a1x plus b1x plus c1z is equal to d1 similarly d2 and d3 then step 1 to eliminate x from the second and third equation and here we do this by subtracting suitable multiple of first equation from the second and third equation so the next step is eliminate y from the third equation and the third step is the value of x y z can be found by back substitution method here note that the number of operations n is equals to n cube by 3 plus n square minus n by 3 then after the next method is ghost Jordan method here some key points are there it is used to find the inverse of the matrix and solving linear equations then here back substitution is avoided by additional computations that reduce the matrix to diagonal form then instead to triangular form in the Gauss elimination method here the number of operations is more than Gauss elimination as the effort of back substitution is saved at the cost of additional computation here step 1 eliminate x from the second and third then step 2 eliminate y from the first and third and step 3 eliminate z from first and second then after the next method is LU decomposition method here it is modification of the Gauss elimination method and it is also used for finding the inverse of the matrix then AX is equals to LU X is equals to B can be written as first one is L into Y is equals to B and U into X is equals to Y here this is the representation of the LU decomposition method then solve Y from A then solve X from B then this method is known as Doolittle's method and then similar methods are Crotes method and Koleski methods then after the next one is iterative method in the iterative method two types are there first one is Jacobi iteration method here this is the equation for the Jacobi iteration method then if a1, b2, c3 are large compared to the other coefficients then solving these four x, y, z respectively will get these three equations then after let us start with the initial approximation x0, y0 and z0 so we will get finally these three equations then here one note is there no component of x raised to k is used in the computation unless y raised to k and z raised to k are computed then the process is repeated till the difference between two consecutive approximation is negligible in generalized form these three are the equation for the respective terms x y and z then after the next method is ghost saddle iteration method here it is the modification of the jacobi's iteration method it starts with x0 y0 z0 is equals to 0 0 0 or anything here no specific condition 
Then in first equation put y is equals to y0, z equals to z0 which will give x1. Then in second equation put x is equals to x1 and z is equals to z0 which will give y1. Similarly in the third equation put x is equals to x1 and y is equals to y1 which will give z1. Here note that to compute any variable use the latest available value in generalized form these three are the equation in the form of x y and z then here the next topic is the numerical integration this is the most important topic for the examination here three methods are there first one is trapezoidal rule here step size h is equals to b minus a upon n then integration x0 to x0 plus nh f of x dx is equals to h by 2 into in bracket first term plus last term plus 2 into all the other terms this is the most important equation for the examination based on this equation more than four to five times questions were asked in the exam so you must have to remember this equation then here error is equals to x minus approximate value then the error in approximating an integral using trapezoidal rule is bounded by minus h square by 12 into b minus a into maximum of f double days of zeta where zeta belongs to mod ab then the second one is simpson's one third rule or you can say that simpson's rule here the equation is integration x0 to x0 plus nh f of x dx is equal to h by 3 in bracket first term plus last term plus 4 into all odd terms plus 2 into all even terms so here h by 3 is there these three equations we have to remember for the trapezoidal then simpson one third and simpson's 3 by 8th rule here the equation is like integration x0 to x0 plus nh f of x dx is equals to 3h by 8 in bracket first term plus last term plus 2 into all multiple of 3 terms plus 3 into all remaining terms and the equation of the errors are also given for one third and 3 by 8 rule then after the last topic of this lecture is solving the differential equations here two methods are there first one is Euler method which is for first order differential equation here given equation is y dash is equals to f of x y then y of x 0 is equals to y 0 then solution is given by y n plus 1 is equals to y n plus h into f of x n y n then the last method is Runge kata method here in the Runge kata method third order and fourth order two types are there so here as you can see that in the third order Runge kata method y i plus 1 is equals to y i plus h by 6 into k1 plus 4 k2 plus k3 where k1 is equals to f of x i y i then k2 is equals to f of x i plus h by 2 and y i plus h by 2 into k1 then k3 is equals to f of x i plus h and y i minus k1 h plus 2 k2 h where h is equals to x i plus 1 minus x1 is the step size then local error is of order h raised to 4 and global error is of order h raised to 3 then after the Runge kata method for the fourth order or you can say that the classical method also here it is used for finding the y at a particular x without solving the first order differential equation here dy by dx is equals to f of xy then k1 k2 k3 k4 and the value of k are given here so finally k is equals to 1 by 6 into k1 plus 2k2 plus 2k3 plus k4 and y of x0 plus h is equals to y0 plus k this is the final equation then here this table is useful for the examination here for the trapezoidal simpsons one third and simpson 3 by 8 rule here dfp means degree of fitting polynomial is 1 2 and 3 respectively and om is equals to order of method which is 1 3 and 3 respectively for the trapezoidal rule simpson's one third rule and the simpson's 3 by 8 rule that means for first degree trapezoidal rule is more accurate than that of simpson's one third rule and for the second degree or third degree equations 
Simpsons 1 third rule is more accurate than that of Simpsons 3 by 8 rule as well as the trapezoidal rule. Here as you can see that degree of fitting polynomial is equals to 1 that means the trapezoidal rule will give you the correct answer for the first degree equations without any error. Similarly for the Euler's method, Rangekita of order 2 and Rangekita method for order 4. Here the order of error and order of method are given. So for the Euler's method, order of error is 2 and order of method is 1. Similarly for the second order Rangekita 3 and 2 and fourth order Rangekita method, order of error is equal to 5 and order of method is equal to 4. So you have to remember this value because sometimes this value can be asked directly in the examination. Here as you can see that there is one example also there for the fourth order Rangekata method or you can say that classical Rangekata method. Then these are some advantages and disadvantages for the Simpsons 1 third rule versus Simpsons 3 by 8 rule. Here first one is advantages it can use an odd or even number of sub intervals rather than just an even number of sub intervals as used in the Simpsons 1 third rule. So here 3 by 8 rules advantages are given then it can converge to estimated integral values much quicker than Simpsons 1 third rule then it has the same order of accuracy as Simpsons 1 third rule when calculating the absolute error but Simpsons 3 by 8 rule is actually slightly more accurate but the fraction used in this error will be smaller and then will provide a more accurate error then these two are the equations for the one third rule and three by eighth rule then disadvantages are this rule requires multiple of three segments only and when calculating the value by hand this rule is more complicated so this is all about the third part of the numerical ability in which we have covered total four types of questions. In the starting we have seen the solution of algebraic and transcendental equations or root finding. Then after solution of linear system of equations then after numerical integration and at the end solving differential equations. So if you like this video please do like and subscribe to our channel for the upcoming videos. In the next part we will discuss about the quick revision for the calculus which is part 4 from total 6 part of the mathematics. So please share this video to the maximum study groups and press the bell icon for the upcoming video. Thank you so much, hope for the best, good luck. Hello everyone, welcome to Medis Global. This is the fourth part of the mathematics in which we will discuss about some important formulas for the calculus. Here these are the topics, first one is limits, then after derivative, then third one is maxima and minima, then after integrals, then convergence and at the end vector calculus. So let's begin one by one. First topic is limits. Here we have made one diagram for finding the different types of limits. Here for Calculating the limit x tends to a f of x, these are the three types are there. First one is asymptote or probability type here in which f of a is equals to b by 0. Then the example is limit x tends to 1, 1 upon x minus 1. Here inspect with the graph or table to learn more about the function. Then after second one is f of a is equals to b where b is real number. This is known as the determinate form of the limit 
or you can say that in this type we can find the limit. So here the example is limit x tends to 3 x square which is equals to 3 square is equals to 9. Then after third one is f of a is equals to 0 by 0 form. This is known as indeterminate form. Here the example is limit x tends to minus 1 x square minus x minus 2 divided by x square minus 2x minus 3. Once again there are three types for finding this solution of indeterminate form. First one is by factorization. So here the similar example can be solved by limit x tends to minus 1 x minus 2 by x minus 3 which is by factoring and by cancelling. Then after second one is by taking the conjugates here limit x tends to 4 under root x minus 2 divided by x minus 4 can be written as limit x tends to 4 1 upon under root x plus 2. This term you can get by using the conjugates and cancelling. Then after the last one is by trig identities or you can say that trigonometric identities. So here the example is limit x tends to 0 sin x upon sin 2x can be written as the limit x tends to 0 1 upon 2 cos x. So here you have to just use the trigonometric properties or trigonometric identities. Then after if any of the example cannot be solved by these three methods then you have to use the approximation method. So these are the different types of limits you can take a screenshot because this table is very useful for understanding the different types of examples based on the limits. So in this way we have prepared short notes for all the subjects of mechanical engineering. You can check out the links are given below in the description box. If you are new to your academy then please subscribe for the upcoming videos. Now here the next topic is some standard expansions. First one is 1 plus x raised to n is equal to 1 plus nx plus n into n minus 1 by 2 factorial into x square plus n into n minus 1 n minus 2 by 3 factorial into x cube up to x raised to n. These all expansions are very useful in the examination. You have to remember these 9 standard expansions. Now next one is x raised to n minus a raised to n divided by x minus a is equal to x raised to n minus 1 plus x raised to n minus 2 into a plus x raised to n minus 3 into x square up to a raised to n minus 1. Similarly, the next one is e raised to x. This is the most favorite expansions of the examiner e raised to x is equals to 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial. Then the next one is log 1 plus x is equals to x minus x square by 2 plus x cube by 3 up to infinite. Then after next one is log 1 minus x. Here it is similar to the log 1 plus x you have to just replace all the signs are negative. So in the log 1 plus x plus minus plus minus signs are simultaneously and in the log 1 minus x all the signs are negative. So this both the expansions are very easier to remember. Then after the next one is sin x. Here sin x is equals to x minus x cube by 3 factorial plus x raised to 5 by 5 factorial minus x raised to 7 by 7 factorial. Here all the odd terms are there and signs are plus minus plus minus simultaneously. Similarly for the cos x you have to start from 1 1 minus x square by 2 factorial plus x raised to 4 by 4 factorial minus x raised to 6 by 6 factorial. Here all the terms are even and signs are plus minus plus minus respectively. Similarly for the sin hx, here you just need to replace the sign of positive in the expansion of sin x. And for the cos hx, here all the terms are positive in the expansion of cos x. So in general, you just need to remember this six expansions based on these six expansions you can remember the other three expansions easily now let's move towards the next one let's see some important limits as we have said earlier in this video we'll only discuss about the important formulas and the equations which will be helpful to you in the examination so this all the limits are very useful because based on these limits there are so many times directly questions were asked in the examination so you must have to remember this limits. First one is limit x tends to infinite sin x upon x is equals to 0 then after limit x tends to infinite 1 plus 1 by x raised to x is equals to e then after limit x tends to 0 1 plus x raised to 1 upon x is equals to e then limit x tends to 0 
a raised to x minus 1 divided by x is equal to log a base e and the next one is limit x tends to 0 e raised to x minus 1 upon x is equal to 1. Moreover, how can we forget these important limits here? Limit x tends to 0 log 1 plus x divided by x is equal to 1. Then after limit x tends to a x raised to n minus a raised to n divided by x minus a is equal to n a raised to n minus 1. This is the very basic limit from the 11th and 12th standard. Then the next one is limit x tends to 0 log more x is equal to minus infinite. So these are some important limits. Now let's see the next topic. Here as you can see that L hospitals rule. When the function is of 0 by 0 or infinite by infinite form, then differentiate numerator and denominator and then apply limits. So this is very important rule for the examination. Then after existence of limits and continuity, here first one is f of x is defined at uh, f of a is exists. Then after if limit x tends to a plus f of x is equals to limit x tends to a minus f of x is equals to l. Then the limit x tends to a f of x exists and equal to l. Then the third one is if limit x tends to a plus f of x is equals to limit x tends to a minus f of x is equals to f of a then the function f of x is said to be continuous. So these are the conditions for functions to be continuous. Then the next one is properties of continuity. Here first one is if f and g are two continuous functions at a then f plus g f into g and f minus g are continuous at a then after f by g is continuous at a provided that g of a is not equal to 0 and more f or more g is continuous at a then here the next topic is Rolle's theorem if f of x is continuous in closed interval a to b and f dash x exists for every value of x in open interval a to b and f of a is equals to f of b then there exists at least one point c between a and b such that f dash c is equals to zero so these three conditions must should be satisfied for Rolle's theorem then after geometrically there exists at least one point c between a and b such that the tangent at c is parallel to x axis here the diagram is also there then after the next one is lagrange mean value theorem it is similar to that of the rolle's mean value theorem here you just need to remember this one equation f dash c is equals to f of b minus f of a upon b minus a and here the first condition is similar that f of x is continuous in the closed interval a and b. So this theorem is also useful in the examination because sometimes they ask directly that use the Rolle's theorem or use the Lagrange theorem. But sometimes you have to decide it to your own that which theorem we have to use. And the next theorem is Cauchy's mean value theorem. Here if f of x is continuous in the closed interval a to a plus h and f dash x exists in the open interval a to a plus h then there exists at least one number theta here 0 less than theta less than 1 such that f of a plus h is equals to f of a plus h into f of a plus theta h then let f1 and f2 be two functions here first one is f1 f2 both are continuous in closed interval a to b then f1 and f2 both are differentiable in open interval a to b and f dash 2 is not equals to 0 in open interval a to b then for a less than beta less than b you can write this equation f1 b minus f1 a divided by f2 b minus f2 a is equals to f1 dash of beta divided by f2 dash of beta so this is the equation for Cauchy's mean value theorem. So basically it is similar to the equation of the slopes. So these equations you have to remember. And once you calculate these three examples, Rolle's and Lagrange and Cauchy's mean value theorem, then these equations will be very easier for you to remember. Now let's move towards the next one. Here it is the second part, derivative. Let's start one by one. 
so here as you can see that first of all here it is the equation for the derivative f plus x is equals to limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of h divided by h then provided the limit exists f plus x is called the rate of change of f at x then after algebra of derivative first one is f plus g dash is equals to f dash plus g dash then f minus g dash is equals to f dash minus g dash then f dot g dash is equals to f dash dot g plus f dot g dash and last one is f by g dash is equals to g dot f dash minus f dot g dash by g square then after homogeneous function any function f of x y which can be expressed in the form of x raised to n into phi of y by x is called the homogeneous function of order n in x and y here every term is of nth degree then f of x y is equals to a0 x raised to n plus a1 x raised to n minus 1 into y plus a2 x raised to n minus 2 into y square up to a n y raised to n then f of x y is equals to x raised to n into phi of y by x then after Euler's theorem on homogeneous equation if u be a homogeneous function of order n in x and y then these two are the main equations for the Euler's theorem on homogeneous function now let's move to our the next topic so here as you can see that the next topic is total derivative here if u is equals to f of x y x is equals to phi of t and y is equals to psi of t then du by dt is equals to del u by del x into dx by dt plus del u by del y into dy by dt then after monotonicity of a function f of x first one is f of x is increasing function if for alpha greater than beta f of alpha greater than f of beta here necessary and sufficient condition f dash x should greater than 0 then second one is f of x is decreasing function for alpha greater than beta f of alpha less than f of beta where sufficient condition is f dash x less than 0 here note that if f is a monotonic function on a domain d then f is 1 1 on d so these conditions are useful in the examination you have to remember these conditions then after maxima and minima this topic is frequently asked in the examination so we have to prepare well this topic now there are two types global and local first one if maximum or minimum value of f of x is to be found let y is equals to f of x then find dy by dx and equate it to zero and from this find the values of x say x is alpha or beta then which is called the critical points then find d square y by dx square at x is equals to alpha if d square y by dx square greater than 0 then y has some minimum value and if d square y by dx square less than 0 then y has a maximum value so these are the sufficient condition then after if d square y by dx square is equals to 0 then proceed further and find at x is equals to alpha then if d cube y by dx square is not equals to 0 then y has neither minima nor maxima at x is equals to alpha then after if d cube y by dx square is equal to 0 then we have to find d raised to 4 y upon dx raised to 4 at x is equals to alpha then if d raised to 4 y upon dx raised to 4 is greater than 0 then y has minimum value and if less than 0 then y has maximum value similarly if d raised to 4 y upon dx raised to 4 is equals to 0 then proceed further so here in this way this cycle will be repeated so in general for maxima and minima you have to remember these conditions and after solving one or two examples automatically you will remember this condition very easily now let's move towards the next one here note that greatest or least value exists either at critical point or at the end point of interval then point of inflection if at a point the following conditions are met then such points is called point of inflection here in the diagram as you can see that where the diagram is changing is sign here first condition is dy by dx is equal to 0 then d square y by dx square is equal to 0 
and d cube y by dx cube is not equals to zero. Here, for third condition, neither minima nor maxima exists. Then after the next one is Taylor series. Here f of a plus h is equals to f of a plus h into f dash a plus h square by 2 factorial into f dash a plus up to infinite. Based on this series you can get the Maclaurin series also. Here you have to put the value of a is equals to 0. So f of x is equals to f of 0 plus x into f dash 0 plus h square by 2 factorial plus f dash 0 plus h cube by 3 factorial into f triple dash 0. So in this way you can calculate the Maclaurin series from the Taylor series. Then after maxima and minima for the two variables, here these three terms you have to remember r is equal to del square f by del x square then s is equal to del square f by del x del y and t is equal to del square f by del y square. Then if del f by del x is equal to 0 and del f by del y is equal to 0 then solve this equation let the solution be in the form of a b and c d these two points you will get from these two conditions then after if rt minus s square is greater than 0 and r less than 0 then the function has maximum at a and b then after if rt minus s square is greater than 0 and r is also greater than 0 then function has minimum value at a and b then if rt minus s square less than 0 at a and b then if f of a b is not an extreme value here f of a b is saddle point and if rt minus s square is greater than 0 at a and b it is doubtful need further investigation then after here the next point is integrals so first one is standard integrals then after definite integrals and then after improper integrals let's see one by one here the first one is standard integrals so there are total 38 standard integrals formula given here you have to remember these formulas because these formulas you have already studied in the 11th and 12th in mathematics so these all are easy but you have to go through it once so you can take the screenshots of the slides then after 22 to 31 formulas are given here all these formula once again you can see the sec x cosec x these all formulas you have studied in the 12th examination as well 1 upon a square plus a square then 1 upon a square minus a square and 1 upon x square minus x square dx these all formulas we have covered in 11th and 12th standard then after you are 32 to 38 these formulas are also important sin square x dx then cos square x dx then after 10 square x dx cot square x dx ln x dx which is x ln x minus x and e raised to x sin bx dx then e raised to x cos bx dx so these all 38 formulas are important and useful in the examination now let's move towards the next topic ok one more formula is here which is for integration integration e raised to x f of x plus f dash x dx is equals to e raised to x into f of x then after integration by parts here this uv rule is most common for the examination but sometimes these common questions can be asked in the examination so let's go through it once here i l a t e where i represents inverse circular for example 10 inverse x then after l for logarithmic and a for algebraic then after t for trigonometric and e for exponential here take that function as u which comes first in the i l a t e form then simply use this above formula integration u v dx is equals to u integration v dx minus integration of du by dx into integration v dx dx then after next one is rules for definite integral first one is integration a to b f of x dx is equals to integration a to c f of x dx plus integration c to b f of x dx where a less than c less than b then second one is integration a to b f of x dx is equals to integration a to b f of a plus b minus x into dx then integration 0 to a f of x dx is equals to 
integration 0 to a f of a minus x dx. Then for the third case, integration 0 to f of x dx, there are two cases. First one is if f of a minus x is equal to f of x, then this will be the equation. And for second one, if f of a minus x is equal to minus f of x, then the answer will be 0. Similarly, for the fourth case, integration minus a to a f of x dx is equal to 2 into integration 0 to a f of x dx for even function and 0 for the odd function. Now the next point is improper integrals here three types are there. In the first and second the limit tends to infinite and in the third type limit is directly given as minus infinite to infinite. So these three types are improper integrals means you cannot directly integrate these integrations. So here two examples are also there. In the first example the answer will be 2 which is definite answer so you can say that it is converges. Here in the second one we cannot find the definite answer so here the answer will be divergence. Then after some important point for the convergence. Here first one is integration a to b f of x dx is said to be convergent if the value of the integral is finite so as we have discussed earlier in the example. Then after if 0 less than or equal to f of x less than or equal to g of x for all x and second one is integration a to infinite g of x dx converges then integration a to infinite f of x dx also converges. Then after f of x greater than or equal to g of x greater than or equal to 0 for all x then integration a to infinite g of x dx diverges then integration a to infinite f of x dx also diverges so then here this is important case is if limit x tends to infinite f of x by g of x is equal to c where c is not equal to 0 then both integrals integration a to infinite f of x dx and integration a to infinite g of x dx converge or both integral diverge then after limit 1 to infinite dx by x raised to p is converges when p greater than 1 and diverges when p less than or equal to 1 this one note is very useful in the examination because most of the time directly one mark mcq can be asked from this one note that you just need to identify the power of x raised to p so here p greater than 1 then you can directly answer the question without solving the question then after next one is integration a to infinite e raised to minus px dx and integration minus infinite to b e raised to px dx is converges for any constant p greater than 0 and diverges for p less than or equal to 0. Then after the integral integration a to b dx by b minus x raised to p is convergent if and only if p less than 1. Then after these are some examples which are frequently asked in the examples so you can remember these examples directly because these are easier to remember but uh, it takes so much time for calculation in the exam so these values you have to remember then here the last topic of this lecture is vector calculus so as you can see that first point is scalar point function if corresponding to each point p of region r there is a corresponding scalar then phi of p is said to be a scalar point function for the region r then after phi of p is equals to phi of x y z then vector point function if corresponding to each point p of region r there corresponds a vector defined by f of p then f is called a vector point function for region r here f of p is equals to f of x y z is equals to f1 of x y z into i cap plus f2 of x y z into j cap plus f3 of x y z into k cap. Then vector differential operator or del operator del is equals to in bracket i cap into del by del x plus j cap into del by del y plus k cap into del by del z. So this vector differential operator is very useful in the examination which is also known as del operator. Then after then after the next point is directional derivative this is also most favorite question for the examiner here the directional derivative of f in a direction n cap 
is the resolved part of del f in direction n cap so here del f into n cap is equals to mode of del f into cos alpha where n cap is a unit vector in a particular direction then after direction cosine is equals to l square plus m square plus n square is equals to 1 where l is equals to cos alpha m is equals to cos beta and n is equals to cos gamma then after gradient the vector function del f is defined as the gradient of the scalar point function f of x y z and written as grad f here grad f is equals to del phi is equals to i cap into del f by del x plus j cap into del f by del y plus k cap into del f by del z here del f is vector function if f of x y z is equals to zero is any surface then del f is a vector normal to the surface f and has a magnitude equal to the rate of change of f along this normal then directional derivative of f of x y z is maximum along del f and magnitude of this maximum is mode del f then after the next one is divergence here the divergence of a continuously differentiable vector point function f is denoted by divergence f and is defined by the equation divergence of f is equals to del dot f so here f is equals to f into i cap plus phi into j cap plus psi into k cap then divergence of f is equals to del dot f is equals to del f by del x plus del phi by del y plus del psi by del z here del dot f is scalar then del dot del is equals to del square is Laplacian operator so here this equation of divergence of f is very useful in the examination let's move towards the next topic then the next topic is curl the curl of a continuously differentiable vector point function f is denoted by curl f and is defined by the equation here curl f is equals to del cross f is equals to vector function. So this is the representation of the curl f. Then after solenoidal vector function, if del dot a is equals to zero, then a is called as solenoidal vector function. Then after irrotational vector function, if del cross a is equals to zero, then a is said to be irrotational, otherwise rotational. Then here some key points are there when del is applied twice to point functions. First one is divergence of grade f is equals to del square f is equals to del square f by del x square plus del square f by del y square plus del square f by del z square. This is the Laplace equation. Then after curl of grade of f is equals to zero, then after divergence of curl of f is equals to zero. Then fourth one is curl of curl of f is equals to del of del of f into del square f. And fifth one is grade of divergence of f is equals to del cross del cross f plus del square f. So you must have to remember these five key points because based on these five key points you can calculate so many number of examples from the vector calculus. In previous year, this one of the key point was also asked in the examination as one marks MCQ. Similarly, there are some key points for the vector identities. Here f and g are scalar functions and these eight identities you can go through it once because these are very easy identities. So you can take a screenshot. Then here ninth one is del cross f cross g is equals to f into del cross g minus g into del cross f here also note these four identities are important now let's move towards the next one the next point is vector product there are some rules for vector product in which first one is for dot product and then after for cross product so you can take a screenshot of this slide also these rules are important for calculating the examples then after these are some different representation 
of different integrals first one is line integral then after surface integral and the third one is volume integral notes are also important you can take a screenshot now let's move towards the next topic here these three are the most important equations for the examination first one is green's theorem if r be a closed region in the xy plane bounded by a simple closed curve c and if p and q are continuous functions of x and y having continuous derivative in r then according to the green's theorem closed integration p dx plus q dy is equals to double integration dq by dx minus dp by dy into dx into dy this equation is most useful for the examination then after next one is stokes theorem if f be continuously differentiable vector function in r then closed integration f into dr is equals to integration del cross f into n into ds and the last one is gauss divergence theorem the normal surface integral of a vector point function f which is continuously differentiable over the boundary of a closed region is equal to the surface integration f into n into ds is equals to volume integration divergence of f into dv so this is all about the force chart of the mathematics in which we have discussed the whole calculus portion first of all we have started with the limits then after derivative then third one is maxima and minima then after we have completed integrals then after convergence and at the end we have covered the important formulas from the vector calculus so if you like this video please do like and subscribe for the upcoming videos in the next part we will discuss about the differential equation which is the fifth part of the mathematics so press the bell icon for the upcoming videos and share this video to the maximum study groups and links for the previous three lectures of the mathematics are given in the description box thank you so much good luck Hello everyone, welcome to Medis Global. This is the fifth part of the mathematics in which we will discuss about important formulas and short notes for the differential equations. Here these are the topics. First one is first order first degree differential equation. Second one is exact equation. Third one is linear differential equation for constant coefficients. Fourth one is cauchy euler equation. Fifth one is Legendre's linear differential equation. Then the last topic is homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients. So these are the outline of this lecture. Let's begin one by one. Here the first topic is differential equations. Here the first one is order of differential equation. It is the order of the highest derivative appearing in it. Then after degree of differential equation, it is the degree of the highest derivative occurring in it after expressing the equation free from radicals and fractions as far as derivatives are concerned. Then third one is differential equation of first order first degree. Here equations of first order and first degree can be expressed in the form of f of x y and y dash is equal to 0 or you can say that y dash is equal to f of x and y. Here following are the different ways of solving equations of first order and first degree. First one is variable separable. Here the equation is f of x into dx plus g of y into dy is equals to 0. For this type of question here the solution is integration f of x dx plus integration g of y dy is equals to c where c is equals to constant. Then after second one is homogeneous equation. 
Here the form of the equation will be dy by dx is equals to f of xy divided by g of xy. Here to solve a homogeneous equation, substitute y is equals to vx. Then dy by dx is equals to v plus x into dv by dx. Here separate the variable v and x and then after integrate. Then the next point is equations reducible to homogeneous equation. Here the differential equation is in the form of dy by dx is equals to ax plus by plus c divided by a dash x plus b dash y plus c dash. Here this is a non-homogeneous but can be converted into homogeneous equation. Case 1. If a by a dash is not equals to b by b dash then substitute x is equals to capital X plus h and y is equals to capital Y plus k. Here h and k are constants. Then after solve for h and k, a h plus b k plus c is equals to 0. Then a dash h plus b dash k plus c dash equals to 0. So finally you will get this equation dy by dx is equals to a x plus b y divided by a dash x plus b dash y. Then after in the case 2, if a by a dash is equals to b by b dash, then you have to use this term a by a dash is equals to b by b dash is equals to 1 by m. So after substituting this term 1 by m, you will get dy by dx is equals to ax plus by plus c divided by m into ax plus by plus c dash. Then substitute ax plus by is equals to t so that dt by dx is equals to b into t plus c divided by m into t plus c dash plus a. Then solve by variable separable method. So these are the two cases for non-homogeneous equation. Then after the next point is linear equations. Here the standard form of a linear equation of the first order can be written as dy by dx plus p of x into y is equals to q of x where p and q are functions of x. Then after second order linear equation here d square y dx divided by dx square plus p of x into dy by dx plus q of x into y is equals to r of x. Then commonly known as Leibniz linear equation. Here integrating factor if is equals to e raised to integration p dx then the common general solution is y into e raised to p dx is equals to integration q into if dx plus c. So you can say that y into if is equals to integration q into if dx plus c. So this general solution is very useful in the examination because every one or two year this question from linear equations were asked in the examination. So this is important. Here note that the degree of every linear differential equation is always 1 but if the degree of the differential equation is 1 then it need not to be linear. Here the example is also given. Here the degree is 1 but it is not the linear equation. So keep this example in mind and this note is also useful in the examination. Now let's move towards the next topic. Here as you can see that Bernoulli's equation. The equation is dy by dx plus p into y is equals to q into y raised to n where p and q are functions of x only. Then divide by y raised to n. So we will get this equation. Then substitute y raised to 1 minus n is equal to z. So dz by dx plus 1 minus n into pz is equal to q into 1 minus n. This is a linear equation and it can be solved easily. Then fourth one is x z differential equations m of xy dx plus n of xy dy is equal to 0. This is the general form for the exit differential equations. Then the necessary and the sufficient condition for the differential equations m dx plus n dy is equal to 0 to be exact is del m by del y is equal to del n by del x. Then solution of exit differential equation integration y is equal to constant m dx plus integration terms of n not containing x into dy is equals to c. So this is also most favorite question for the examiner. 
here these three equations first one is linear then after Bernoulli and the third one is exact differential from these three types mostly one questions were asked in the examination so keep these all three formulas in your mind now let's move towards the next one And after here the next topic is equation reducible to the exact equation first one is integrating factor sometimes an equation which is not exact may become so on multiplication by some function known as integrating factor here some rules are there first one is x dy plus y dx is equals to d of xy then after x dy minus y dx by x square is equals to d of y by x then Similarly, there are four more equations. You can note down this also. Number three, x dy minus y dx divided by x y is equals to d log y by x. Then after x dy minus y dx by y square is equals to minus d of y by x. Then after fifth one is x dy minus y dx divided by x square plus y square is equals to d of tan inverse y by x then last one is x dy minus y dx divided by x square minus y square is equals to d into 1 by 2 log x plus y divided by x minus y so here d for the differentiation as well so these are some basic equations or forms you can remember now let's move towards the next one Then after there are some more rules. Rule number one: When m dx plus n dy is equals to zero, is homogeneous in x and y, and m x plus n y is not equals to zero, then i f is equals to one upon m x plus n y. So these are the different conditions for which you have to use this equation of integrating factor. Here rule number two: If the equation f one of x y into y dx plus f2 of xy into x dx is equals to 0 and mx minus ny is not equals to 0 then if is equals to 1 upon mx minus ny then after if the m dx plus n dy is equals to 0 and 1 upon n into del m by del y minus del n by del x is equals to f of x then integrating factor is equals to e raised to f of x dx then the last rule is if the equation m dx plus n dy is equals to 0 and 1 upon m del n by del x minus del m by del y is equals to f of y then integration factor is equals to e raised to integration f of y dy so these are main four types of questions so for these different types you have to remember their integrating factor because from one of the type the questions will be asked in your examination so now let's move towards the next one here the next topic is linear differential equation with constant coefficients so this is the representation for general equation of LD with constant coefficients then after the equation can be written as d raised to n plus k1 d raised to n minus 1 plus up to kn into y is equals to x where d is equals to d by dx here f of d into y is equals to x where f of d is equals to 0 is called auxiliary equation then some rules for finding the complementary function here first rule is or you can say that case 1 if all the roots of auxiliary equations are real and different then you have to use this rule d minus m1 into d minus m2 up to d minus mn into y is equals to 0 here the solution is y is equals to c1 e raised to m1x plus c2 e raised to m2x plus up to cn e raised to mn x so here this is the first case for which there are real and different roots now the next case is if two roots are equal for example m1 is equals to m2 then y is equals to c1 plus c2x into e raised to m1x similarly if m1 is equals to m2 is equals to m3 then y is equals to c1 plus c2x plus c2x square into e raised to m1x 
then third case is if one pair of roots are imaginary for example m1 is equals to alpha plus i beta then m2 is also equals to alpha minus i beta then here the solution will be y is equals to e raised to alpha x into c1 cos beta x plus c2 sin beta x so yes after calculating one example for each and every case you will understand this equation and easily remember these equations then after next case is if two pairs of root are imaginary then for example repeated imaginary roots alpha plus or minus i beta and alpha plus or minus i beta then y is equals to e raised to alpha x into c1 x plus c2 cos beta x plus c3 x plus c4 into sin beta x so these are the four cases for linear differential equation with constant coefficients now let's move towards the next one here rules for finding the particular integral pi is equals to 1 upon d raised to n plus k1 d raised to n minus 1 plus up to kn into x is equals to 1 upon f of d into x here case 1 when x is equals to e raised to ax then pi is equals to 1 upon f of d into e raised to ax here put d is equals to a where f of a is not equals to 0 similarly in the second one pi is equals to x into 1 upon f dash d into e raised to ax put d is equals to a then f dash a is not equals to 0 but f of a is equals to 0 then pi is equals to x square 1 upon f double dash d into e raised to x then put d is equals to a here f of a is equal to 0, f dash a is equal to 0 and f double dash a is not equal to 0. Now the case 2 when x is equal to sin ax plus b or cos ax plus b then pi is equal to 1 upon phi d square sin ax plus b. Here put d square is equal to minus a square where phi of minus a square is not equal to 0. Then similarly pi is equal to x into 1 upon phi dash d square into sin x plus b put d square is equals to minus a square where phi dash of minus a square is not equals to 0 and phi of minus a square is equals to 0 then similarly the third case so these are the two cases here some more cases are there let's see one by one here case number three when x is equals to x raised to m where m being positive integer then pi is equals to 1 upon f of d into x raised to m is equals to f of d inverse into x raised to m so finally you will get this equation in the form of this one then after case 4 when x is equals to e raised to x into v where v is function of x here pi is equals to 1 upon f of d into e raised to x into v so pi is equals to e raised to ax into 1 upon f of d plus a into v then evaluate 1 upon f of d a into v as in case 1 2 and 3 then after here two more cases are there case number 5 here as you can see that when capital x is equals to x into v of x then pi is equals to 1 upon f of d into x into v of x is equals to x minus f dash d divided by f of d into 1 upon f of d into v of x then last case when x is any other function of x then pi is equals to 1 upon f of d into x then factorized f of d is equals to d minus m1 d minus m2 up to d minus mn and resolve 1 upon f of d into partial fractions and up, then apply 1 upon d minus a into x is equals to e raised to ax integration x into e raised to minus ax dx on each terms then the complete solution for all these six cases will be cf plus pi then here this is most favorite question for the examiner from this topic there may be one question in every one or two year so here the topic name is cauchy euler equation or you can say that homogeneous linear equation here this is the representation for this cauchy euler equation then substitute x is equals to e raised to d then after x into dy by dx is equals to dy then x square into d square y by dx square is equals to d into d minus 1 into y and x cube 
into d cube y by dx cube is equals to d into d minus 1 into d minus 2 into y. So after substituting these differentials, the cauchy euler equation results into a linear equation with constant coefficients. Then it is very simple. As we have discussed earlier in the six cases, you have to choose any preferable case and you have to calculate this example according to the previous cases. So third case is are also useful in this cauchy euler equation now let's move towards the next one here the next topic is legendre's linear equation here this is the representation for this legendre's linear equation then x plus b is equals to e raised to t and t is equals to ln ax plus b so for this equation you have to substitute these values x plus b into dy by dx is equals to a into dy then x plus b square into d square y by dx square is equals to a square into d into d minus 1 into y and third one is x plus b cube into d cube y by dx cube is equals to a cube into d into d minus 1 into d minus 2 into y then after substituting these differentials the legendre's equation results into a linear equation with constant coefficients so once again that six cases are also useful for solving the examples of this Legendre's linear equation. So in general, you must have to remember that six cases for linear differential equation with constant coefficients, which we have recently discussed. Now let's move towards the next one. Here, this is most favorite MCQ for the examiner. Partial differential equations are used as mathematical models for phenomena in all branches of engineering and science. Here this is the general equation. So from this equation you have to remember this term B, A and C. Then apply this condition. If B square minus 4S is less than 0 then it is steady. Heat transfer flow and diffusion. Here this equation you have to remember for the laplace equations del square u by del x square plus del square u by del y square is equals to zero similarly for the parabolic b square minus 4ac is equals to zero and for the elliptical b square minus 4ac less than zero so these conditions you have to remember because so many times questions were asked from these tables in the form of mcq for one marks Then this is the last topic of this lecture, homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients. So this is the representation of the homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients. This is called the homogeneous because all the terms containing derivative is of same order. Then here you have to substitute d is equals to del by del x and d des is equals to del by del y. So your equation will be in the form of this one d raised to n plus k1 d raised to n minus 1 into d days plus up to kn d days raised to n is equals to f of xy so you can say that f of d and d days is equals to f of xy then here there are some steps for finding the cf and pi here step number one write the auxiliary equation so m raised to n plus k1 m raised to n minus 1 plus up to kn is equals to 0 where m is equals to d by d days and the roots are m1 m2 up to mn then here two cases for finding the cf first one is for distinct roots cf is equal to f1 of y plus m1x plus f2 of y plus m2x up to infinite then cf is equal to f1 of y plus m1x plus x into f2 of y plus m1x plus f3 of y plus m3x plus up to infinite here two roots are equals then after step 2 finding the pi pi is equal to 1 upon f of d and d days into f of xy here four cases are there when f of ax plus by is equals to e raised to ax plus by then put d is equals to a and d dash is equals to b then similarly for f of xy is equals to sine mx plus ny then put d square is equals to minus m square d into d dash is equals to minus mn and d dash square is equals to minus n square then third case f of x y is equals to x raised to m into y raised to n pi is equals to 1 upon f of d and d days into x raised to m into y raised to n which is equals to f of d and d days inverse into x raised to m into y raised to n 
then the last case is when f of x y is any function of x and y then p i is equals to 1 upon f of d and d days into f of x y then resolve 1 upon f of d and d days into partial fraction considering f of d and d days as the function of d alone and operate each partial fraction on f of x y remembering that 1 upon d minus m d days into f of x y is equals to integration f of x and c minus mx dx where c is replaced by y plus mx after integration so basically these are some cases for which you have to remember this equations of cf and pi and the general solution will be cf plus pi so this is all about the fifth part of the mathematics in which we have discussed about the important formulas and short notes for the differential equation we have started from first order first degree differential equation then after exit equation then linear differential equation for constant coefficients then after we have seen cauchy euler equation then legendre's linear differential equation and at the end homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients so we have covered all the important formulas from this portion so if you like this video please do like and subscribe for the upcoming videos in the next video we'll discuss about some important formulas for the complex variable which is the final part of the complete mathematics in which we have prepared total 6 parts so the links for other four parts are given in the description box press the bell icon for the upcoming video share this video to the maximum study groups thank you so much hope for the best good luck Hello everyone welcome to Medis Global this is the final chart of the mathematics in which will include the important formulas for the complex variables and the laplace transform so as you can see here these are the outlines first one is basics then after methods of constructing analytic function then third one is complex integration then after cauchy's integration theorem then after morera's theorem then after lorentz series and at the end we'll discuss about laplace transform so let's begin one by one here first one is complex variables in that first topic is if z is equals to x plus iy is a complex number where x and y are real numbers called as real and imaginary part of z so these are some basic portions we have included in the start modulus of absolute value is equals to more z is equals to under root x square plus y square here argument of z is equals to theta which is equals to argument of z is equals to tan inverse y by x then after a function of a complex variable it is a rule by means of which it is possible to find one or more complex numbers w for every value of z in certain domain d then w is equals to f of z where z is equals to x plus i y here w is equals to f of z is equals to u of x y plus i into v of x y then after next topic is continuity of f of z before that if you are new to academy then please subscribe for the upcoming videos and the links for the previous five parts you can find out in the description box so here a function w is equals to f of z is said to be continuous at z is equals to z not if limit z tends to z0 into f of z is equals to f of z0 here further f of z is said to be continuous in any region r of the z plane if it is continuous at every point of that region then also if w is equals to f of z is equals to u of xy plus i into u of xy is continuous at z is equals to z0 then u of xy and v of xy are also continuous at x is equals to x0 and y is equals to y0 so these are some basics now let's move towards the next topic here the next topic is theorem of differentiability 
the necessary and sufficient conditions for the derivative of the function f of z to exist for all values of z in region R. Here first one is dy by dx or dy by dy or dv by dx or dv by dy are continuous functions of x and y in region R. Here second point is most important for the examination as you can see that del u by del x is equal to del v by del y and del u by del y is equal to minus del v by del x. This is known as Cauchy remain equations or you can say that CR equations. So as you all know these equations are most useful in the examination more than 4 to 5 times from these equations questions were asked in the examination and 2 to 3 times these conditions were asked in the examination so you must have to remember this Cauchy remains equations now then after the next point is analytic functions or regular functions or you can say that holomorphic functions a single valued function which is defined and differentiable at each point of a domain d is said to be analytic in that domain then after a point at which an analytic function creases to process a derivative is called singular point then after thus if u and v are real single valued functions of x and y such that del u by del x del u by del y del v by del x and del v by del y are continuous throughout the region r then cr equations we have discussed earlier in this so these two equations del u by del x is equals to del v by del y and del u by del y is equals to minus del v by del x are both necessary and sufficient conditions for the f of z is equal to u plus iv to be analytic in region r so these two conditions you have to remember for the functions to be analytic function or you can say that regular function or you can say that holomorphic functions then after real and imaginary part u and v of the function is called conjugate function and an analytic function possesses derivatives of all order and these are themselves analytic so you can keep pen and paper with you while watching this lecture because all the formulas and concepts we are discussing here is most important for the examination so you can note down that equations and formulas now let's move towards the next point here the next point is harmonic functions if f of z is equal to u plus i will be an analytic function in some region of the z plane then the cr equations are satisfied then after differentiating with respect to x and y respectively we'll get del square u by del x square plus del square u by del y square is equal to zero which is laplace equation here note that for a function to be regular the first order partial derivations of u and v must be continuous in addition to cr equations then mean value of any harmonic function or a circle is equal to the value of the function at the center so in general for harmonic functions the laplace equation should be satisfied and these two nodes are important for the regular function or you can say that analytic function now let's move towards the next point here as you can see that methods of constructing analytic functions first one is if the real part of a function is given then f dash z is equal to del u by del x minus i into del u by del y then after integrate with points at z and 0 so we'll get f of z is equal to integration del u by del x at z and 0 dz minus i into integration del u by del y at z and 0 into dz plus c similarly in case of v of x y is known then f dash z is equal to del of d by del x plus i into del v by del y. Then after in the second case, if u of x y is known, then to find v of x y we have dv is equal to del v by del x into dx plus del v by del y into dy. Similarly, dv is equal to minus del v by del y into dx plus del u by del x into dy. Then integrate this equation to find v. So we will get f of z is equal to u of x y plus i into v of x y. Then after the next case is if a real part of the analytic function f of z is given which is harmonic function u of x y then f of z is equal to 2u of z by 2 and z by 2i minus u of 0 and 0. These are the three cases 
or you can say that three methods of constructing analytic functions now this is all about the basic portions now the next topic is complex integration here line integral is equals to integration c f of z dz where c need not to be close path here f of z is equals to integrate and cow c is equals to path of integration then contour integral is equals to close integration f of z dz where if c is closed path then if f of z is equals to u of xy plus i into v of xy and dz is equals to dx plus i dy then you can write integration c f of z dz equals to integration c u dx minus v dy plus i into integration c v dx plus u dy so in general for line integration c need not to be closed path and for contour integral c is necessary to be closed path now let's move towards the next point here theorem is that f of z is analytic in a simple connected domain then integration z0 to z1 f of z dz is equals to f of z1 minus f of z0 here integration is independent of the path then after dependence on path in general complex line integration depends not only on the endpoints but also on the path however analytic function in simple connected domain is independent of path now here this is the most important equation for the examination coach's integration theorem and coach's integration formula we will discuss after this topic so here first of all if f of z is analytic in a simple connected domain d then for every simple closed path c in d integration c f of z dz is equals to zero here note that in other words by coach's integration theorem if f of z is analytic on a simple closed path c and everywhere inside c with no exception not even a single point then close integration c f of z dz equals to zero then after here if f of z is analytic within and on a closed curve and if a is any point within c then f of a is equals to 1 upon 2 pi i into integration c f of z dz by z minus a then f dash a is equals to 1 factorial upon 2 pi i into integration c f of z divided by z minus a square dz so up to infinite you can write down so in general this is the final form of the Cauchy integral formula so you must have to remember Cauchy integral theorem and Cauchy integral formulas for the examination now let's move towards the next topic then here the next topic is Morera's theorem so if f of z is continuous in a region and integration c f of z dz is equal to zero around every simple closed c then f of z is analytic in that region then Taylor series so this is also important for the exam here if f of z is analytic inside a circle c with center at a then for z inside c f of z is equals to f of a plus f dash a into z minus a plus f dash a by 2 factorial into z minus a square up to infinite so based on the taylor series you can remember the mclaurin series also you just have to put a is equals to 0 in taylor series then here this is the another form of taylor series where z is equals to a plus h so here f of a plus h is equals to f of a plus h into f dash a plus h square by 2 factorial into f double dash a plus up to infinite so this is the taylor series now the next topic is Lorentz series if f of z is analytic in the ring shaped region r bounded by two concentric circles c1 and c2 of radii r1 and r2 where r1 greater than r2 and with center at a then for all z in r f of z is equals to a0 plus a1 into z minus a plus a2 into z minus a square plus up to a of my to z minus a raised to minus 2 so here in this series the values are coming in the minus also where n is equals to 1 upon 2 pi i into integration f of t by t minus a raised to n plus 1 into dt here f of z is analytic inside the curve then a of minus n is equals to 0 
and Laurent series reduces to Taylor series. So these are some important series you can note down. Now let's move towards the next topic. Here as you can see that zeros of analytic function. Here the value of z for which f of z is equals to 0. Here if f of z is analytic in the neighborhood of a point z is equals to a. Then by Taylor's theorem we can write down like f of z is equals to a0 plus a1 into z minus a plus i2 into z minus a square up to infinite. So we can write down like f of z is equal n is equal to 0 to infinite into an into z minus a raised to n where a n is equal to f raised to n of a divided by n factorial here a0 is equal to a1 is equal to a2 up to a n minus 1 is equal to 0 then f of z is said to have a 0 of order n at z is equal to a so you have to remember this note then after here as you can see that singularities of an analytic function. A singular point of a function as the point at which function increases to be analytic. Here first case is isolated singularity if z is equals to a is a singularity of f of z such that f of z is analytic at each point in its neighborhood. There exists a circle with center a which has no other singularity one then z is equals to a is called an isolated singularity then second one is removable singularity if all the negative powers of z minus a in Lorentz series are zero then f of z is equals to into summation of n is equals to zero to infinite into an z minus a raised to n then singularity can be removed by defining f of z at z is equals to a is such a way that it becomes analytic at z is equals to a. So here limit z tends to a, f of z exists finitely then z is equals to a is removable singularity. Then third one is essential singularity. If the numbers of negative power of z minus a in Lorentz series is infinite then z is equals to a is called an essential singularity. Limit n tends to a f of z does not exist in this case then last one is poles here if all the negative power of z minus a in Lorentz series after nth are missing then the singularity at z is equals to a is called the pole of order n here a pole of first order is called a simple pole so these are some basic notes you have to remember now let's move towards the next topic here this is the important topic residue theorem if f of z is analytic in and on a closed curve C, except at a finite number of singular points within C, then integration C f of z dz is equals to 2 pi i. Here, sum of the residue at the singular point within C. Then, calculation of residues. Three types are there. First one is if f of x has a simple pole at z is equals to a, then here residue of f of a is equals to limit z tends to a z minus a into f of z. Then second one is if f of z is equals to phi of z divided by phi of small z where phi of z is equals to z minus a into f of z and f of a is not equals to 0 then residue of f of a is equals to phi of a divided by phi dash of a. Then after third one is if f of z has a pole of order n at z is equals to a then residue of f of a is equals to 1 upon n minus 1 factorial into d raised to n minus 1 divided by dz raised to n minus 1 into z minus a raised to n into f of z at z is equal to a here n is equal to order of singularity then here note that if an analytic function has singularities at a finite number of points then the sum of residues at these points along with the infinity is zero so these are some important cases for the residues and uh, calculation of residues you have to remember because sometimes the questions may be asked like find the residue of any term so you just have to remember these equations now let's move towards the next topic here the final topic of this lecture is Laplace transform here first one is introduction Laplace transform is a method to get generalized frequency domain representation of a continuous time signal and is generalization of 
CTFT where CTFT stands for continuous time Fourier transform. Here definition of Laplace transform. Laplace of f of t is equals to f of s is equals to integration 0 to infinite e raised to minus f s t into f of t dt. Here it is one sided or unilateral Laplace transform where s is equals to sigma plus j into omega. Then Laplace of f of t is equals to f of s is equals to integration minus infinite to plus infinite e raised to minus s t into f of t dt is two sided or you can say that bilateral Laplace transform. So these two equations are most useful in the examination because more than 2 to 3 times these equations only asked in the examination. Then here are some properties of Laplace transform. First one is frequency shift. Here Laplace of e raised to minus at into f of t is equals to f of s plus a and Laplace of e raised to at f of t is equals to f of s minus a. Then time shift. Laplace of f of t minus t naught is equals to e raised to minus s t 0 into f of s. Then after differentiation in time domain, Laplace of d by dt f of t is equals to s f of s minus f of 0 where f of 0 is initial value of f of t. Then if initial conditions are 0, here differentiating in time domain is equivalent to multiplying by s in frequency domain. Similarly, this another equation is given then after integration in time domain so here for this also equation you have to remember so integration in time domain is equivalent to division by s in frequency domain if f of t is equals to 0 for t less than 0 so these are the two cases first one is for differentiation and second one is for integration now let's move towards the next topic so here as you can see the differentiation in frequency domain L of f of t into t is equals to minus d into f of s by ds and Laplace of t raised to n f of t is equals to minus 1 raised to n d raised to n divided by ds raised to n into f of s. This equation is also very important for the examination. Here differentiation in frequency domain is equals to multiplication by t in time domain and integration in frequency domain L of f of t by t is equals to integration s to infinite f of s ds. Here integration in frequency domain is equals to division by t in time domain. So these are some important formulas for finding the Laplace transform. Then after here the next one is initial value theorem if f of t and its derivative f dash t are Laplace transformable then Limit t tends to 0 f of t is equals to limit s tends to infinite s into f of s. Here this theorem does not apply to the rational function f of s in which the order of the numerator polynomial is equals to or greater than order of the denominator polynomial. Then final value theorem if f of t and its derivative f dash t are Laplace transformable then limit t tends to infinite f of t is equals to limit s tends to 0 s into f of s for applying the final value theorem it is required that all the poles of s into f of s be in the left half of s plane poles on j omega axis also not allowed then after convolution theorem here it is most useful for the examination laplace of f1 t into f2 t is equals to f1 s into f2 s so these are some equations and theorem now let's move towards the direct laplace transforms of the functions here laplace transform of the periodic function if f of t is periodic function with period t then laplace of f of t is equals to 1 upon 1 minus e raised to minus s t into f1 of s where f1 of s is equals to integration 0 to t e raised to minus s t into f of t dt then laplace transform of the standard functions here this table is most useful for the examination because for solving any example you have to remember this standard equations of Laplace transform. Here some more equations are there you can note down like cos of at into u of t then after sine of h at into u of t. So these are some standard formulas you have to remember. So yes, we have included here total 25 formulas like f of 8 is equals to 1 upon mod a into f of 
S by 8 then after e raised to minus alpha t into sin omega t is equals to omega upon s plus alpha square plus omega square similarly t raised to 1 by 2 is equals to under root pi by 2s raised to 3 by t and the last one is t raised to minus 1 by 2 is equals to under root pi by s so these are the important formulas for the complex variables and Laplace transform in which we have first included basics then after methods of constructing analytic functions then after we have seen complex integration then after coaches integration formula and theorem then after Morera's theorem then after Lorentz series and at the end we have discussed about Laplace transform so this is all about the sixth part of the mathematics so now we have completed all the formulas for the mathematics portion so you can check out the previous five parts in the description box if you like this video please do like and subscribe to our channel for the upcoming videos and share this video to maximum study groups thank you so much offer the best good luck